Hello, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take a spherical image from Google Maps where you can, you know, pan around and look anywhere you want from Google Street View and transport it and put it into the Stellarium Planetarium app that you can use to check out, the, you know, where the stars, how the stars are positioned, all the nebula, the Milky Way, etc. So you can integrate the ground from Google Maps, the actual ground from an actual location that you might want to go and shoot from, and you can see how the night sky is being positioned with regards to those ground objects. So you can really get an awesome plan for your nightscape compositions. Sure, you can do. To it, it's to a some extent using an app like Photopills or Planet on your uh, mobile phone, but seeing it in the Stellarium where you can position all the nebula, especially for like more zoomed in sort of deep scape pictures, is really something that cannot be beaten. So let's jump into the computer and let me show you how it can be done. <music> Okay, so what you want to do is first you want to go to Google Maps, of course, and you want to find a vantage point that you want to photograph your nightscape from. So I'm going to type a name of a mountain that I'm going to use to photograph some other mountains in the distance. So the name of the mountain is, this is in Polish, but don't worry, it will be perfectly understandable for you in English. And right here on the left side, you can see street view and spherical images. So I'm going to click on that. And then you want to pick one that would work for you. You have a list here, depending on the location, it's going to be more images to choose from or less. But I think this one will work, will work best. And as you can see from this mountain, you can overlook this awesome range of mountains. This is the High Tatra Mountains on the border of Slovakia and Poland. And I want to shoot the night sky against these mountains. So what you want to do is you want to go to uh, this website and download an app that you will use to take the image from Google Maps and download it as a JPEG onto your computer. Uh, links to all this stuff that I'm going to be using in today's video will be down below in the description. There will be a lot of websites and a lot of steps, but bear with me. We'll get there. Uh, so you want to go here and download this app. So let me just open that real quick. Okay, and here's the app. I want to pick the location where I want to save it. So I have prepared this uh, folder. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to go here and then just copy the entire URL from Google Maps. So just copy that, go back to this app, paste it here, uh, and then just download Panorama. And it will download itself. You see that download is now completed. So when we go to this folder, we can see we have the Street View 360.jpg. And what you want to do is open it with Photoshop because we need to remove the we need to remove the sky. We need to make the sky transparent so we can see the actual sky from Stellarium through this image. And you can spend as much time as you want doing a precise mask. Um, in this case, where I don't have anything protruding into the sky, I can just do a very lazy sort of rectangular mask. So let make, let's make sure that I can see those mountains in the foreground. There they are. And then just mask. And that's basically it. All I need to do is just export it as a PNG that will um, keep that transparency information safe. And that is my image. And now we want to import it into Stellarium. So what we want to do is you want to go to, um, if you're on a Mac, you need to go to your computer applications. And then from here, you need to find Stellarium and you need to right click and show package contents. If you're on Windows, it should be pretty much, uh, you know, the same, maybe even easier. You can Google where this folder is on Windows, but on a Mac, it's in contents, resources, and there you have landscapes. And now we have a bunch of landscapes. Some of them are built into Stellarium. Some of them I have added myself already. So let's just copy one of the built-ins, for instance, the Grossmugl, uh, whatever it's <laughs> pronounced. So I'm just going to copy that. And let's name it Babia Mountain. And there we go. And inside that you want to delete everything apart from the landscape.ini file. So I'm just going to delete everything from here. Uh, you want to move this PNG file that you have exported from Photoshop and move it here into this folder. 
Uh, you want to make note of the name of this file. I can just copy that and open this INI file in some kind of a text editor. And there we go. We have a bunch of information here, but most of that we can delete right away. So you want to delete um, pretty much uh, everything from here. And you also want to delete all of this stuff. I'm going to put down below in the description of this video contents of the file that we will be creating in this video. So you can just copy and paste from the description and work from there if that's easier. Um, but let me just uh, change the name. So the name is Babia Mountain again. Uh, author, let's say Google Maps, whoever the actual author was, doesn't matter. Description. Uh, and then we have the map tex and this is the name of our file within this folder so i'm just going to paste that and png that works we have a parameter angle rotate z this is something that we are going to need to calculate in a moment so for now we're going to keep it and initial brightness i don't think this um, even matters at all so i'm just going to point, uh, put 0.5 here and then you have some location information so i want to change the time zone to europe dash slash sorry Warsaw and the altitude. We need to find out the altitude and we need to find out the coordinates. This, uh, these three parameters are kind of important. So let's go back to the Street View Download 360. And if we scroll down here, we can see the geolocation. So I can just copy it from here. But this is the decimal representation of coordinates. I need degrees, minutes, and seconds. So we need to convert it. And in order to convert it, you can go to this website, for instance. I will link it down below in the description as well. And decimal to degrees, minutes, seconds. So I'm just going to paste it here for a moment so I can grab one of these numbers. And this is my latitude. This is my longitude. Convert. And then we have the results. So again, I'm going to copy that, go into our file. This is the latitude, uh, but it's in an incorrect format. D, no space here, and a plus. The plus indicates that this is the Northern Hemisphere and the same for longitude. So let me just copy that. Uh, and again, the plus indicates that this is a longitude due east. And there we have it. And when it comes to altitude, let's just type uh, in Google. Uh, let's just type Babia elevation. And this is uh, 1,725 meters, so let's put that here. 1725, that's right. And now we need to calculate our angle rotate Z. And this is basically how this panel, how this image should be um, positioned. What kind of an azimuth does it have? You know, where it faces north, where it faces south. This is kind of important, so it lines up with the actual sky. So this is not that easy to do. There is there are some information about this in the Street View uh, Panorama Downloader app. As you can see, there's a north rotation 180 degrees. There is some information about that, but I don't think it's reliable. From what I found out, it's not reliable at all. So what I want to do is uh, take a look at this image again. So let's go into Photoshop and you can see that these, this mountain range is right here, let's say. And uh, I also know, I also know that this mountain range, if I go back, uh, this mountain range is here. This is the mountain range. So I can figure out what is the azimuth from this vantage point to this sort of known location in my frame and and take that as the sort of baseline to calculate this parameter in the INI file. So what I want to do is you want to go to this website. And this is um, something that will let you do that. Uh, what I type here again, uh, my vantage point. Okay, there it is. And you want to change it from point to distance. And then you want to point somewhere. Uh, this is the mountain range. And you can see that the direction is 135 degrees. And now we need to plug this into an equation this is the Stellarium uh, Docs website. And right here, you can see that in order to calculate um, this angle uh, rotate Z parameter, you need to plug it into this kind of a formula. So let me just open up uh, 
console here to uh, calculate this. You can calculate it in calculator on, on, on a piece of paper, wherever you want. I just find it easy to do it here. So 270 plus B, and B is the, the bearing you want to have the chosen object in degrees. So in our case, the bearing is 135, and then minus, and then in parentheses, I can write any expression here, a mathematical expression. This is pretty uh, convenient. This is like a JavaScript console, but it doesn't matter. For, the, for what I'm trying to do here, 360 times, and then we have x divided by x. And the little x is the distance in pixels from the left side of the image to the object you want to align. And the capital X is the horizontal image size. So let's go back into Photoshop uh, and let's calculate this. So I'm going to go to view, um, new guide, vertical, let's go 50%. And then I can move this guide to like the middle of this mountain range. So let me move this guide and I can read that 4586 is my little x. 4588 eight, or whatever. So uh, 4588 and the big x is going to be the size of this image. So let's go to canvas size and this is going to be this one 8660. So let's copy that. Let's paste it here. And there we have it, 214. And 214 is going to be my angle rotate Z. So 214 here, save the file, close it. And now we are almost ready to fire up Stellarium. Let me just show you one thing in Photoshop that I forgot before. So let's go back into Photoshop. What you wanna make sure is that this horizon line right here is in the middle of this panorama. So we can go to the crop tool and bring up uh, the grid here. Let's hit enter to bring up the grid. You want to make sure that this line in the middle of the grid is aligning with the horizon. If it's not, then the horizon in Stellarium will not match with the horizon in this panel. And you can use the crop tool in order to crop out this image in a way that the horizon is in the middle, but make sure that you don't crop out any edges. So by doing that, you're going to be changing the aspect ratio. That's okay. Don't crop anything horizontally because that way the panel will not cover 360 degrees of azimuth, which it has to. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. So at this point, let's, uh, let's discard this and let's fire up Stellarium. Okay, and it opens, opens up like this. This is actually an image that I have taken from the ground. This is a drone shot panorama. And this is actually the mountains that we saw uh, in the distance from the other vantage point that we, are, we were working with. This is another thing that you can do in Stellarium. You can actually put your own images into here, but you need to create a spherical photo. And about that, I can probably make a separate video if you want. Let me know down below in the comments if this is something that interests you. But for now, uh, we are not going to focus on that. We are going to change the landscape. So go to the left side, go to this icon, landscape. And then I want to pick this one that you have created. So this is the Babia Mountain. Okay, and there we have it. Um, we can close that. And right now, as you can see, the, it is in the evening. So we can advance to a different time of day. So let's say, uh, let's go to around midnight. Let's say this. And right here, you can see this is our landscape. We can actually make it a little bit brighter. We can go here and then in the landscape options, bring up the brightness. So let's go to 0.5, let's say. And then you can clearly see this is the mountain range that I want to compose my image with. And this is the night sky. I can actually turn off the atmosphere to make the night sky a little bit brighter. I just hit the A button on the keyboard to do that. And then uh, let's go to a better day. Um, I know that somewhere in May, I should have a pretty good composition with the core of the Milky Way against these mountains. And indeed, we have the mountain range here in the distance and there we have our Milky Way. And if I wanna compose a shot, I can go to this sort of framing preview, this button right here. This will bring up my framing. And if you go to this range icon, you can import here your, um, your sensors, so basically your cameras, uh, you can input your telescopes, which are like focal lens of your lenses, if you want to do like landscape stuff. Uh, so this is pretty cool. I have like 16, 24, 28, 50, 135, 300, and then my telescope. And then in sensors, you have the sensor sizes of like full frame APS-C cameras. So 
Uh, this will help you frame up your shot. So let's say I want to use the EOS R and I want to use 135 to get a nice deep scape. And as you can see, if we go a little bit earlier, I can get uh, I can get a nice shot with the mountains here and the Lagoon Nebula for a pretty cool deep scape shot. If I go a little bit earlier in that day, also you can see that the row of Yuki is going to position itself nicely with regards to these mountains as well. So let's go back a little bit. And then you can see we have the row of Yuki here in my frame in the HANA 35, and then I have the mountains on this side. It's probably better to shoot it in vertical. There you go, nice composition. You have the mountains here and row of Yuki here, and you can use that tool to really frame it up. On this side, you can see that the mountain starts here, and then we have a composition with the Eagle Nebula, the Sagittarius Cloud, Sagittarius Star Cloud, and you can really do whatever you want here. This is really, really awesome. So there we have it. This is all I have for you today. I know it's a bit too much, but feel free to watch this video again, set the speed to 75% if you want to, if I was going a little bit too fast. Every of these websites that I have been using and the math mathematical formula will be down below in the description so you can digest it in the way that you want and at the, at the proper time uh, to, to make it understandable to you if anything was confusing. I think it's a lot of steps, uh, uh, but I think it's worth it if you want to plan your shot and really make sure that everything is going to line up the way you want. This is pretty awesome. And also, like I mentioned, you can put in here your own images. So for instance, you can map up your backyard, your balcony at home, so you can see which parts of the night sky is visible, what parts are obstructed by like buildings, trees or whatever. This is really awesome. And by the way, everything I used here is free. The Stellarium is free. The app to download 360 images from Google Maps is also free. And all of those uh, websites that I use to calculate all the angles and stuff are also, of course, free. So feel free to make use of that. Okay, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please make sure to leave it a like down below. I would really appreciate it as always. And consider subscribing to my channel for future videos like this. Hopefully have some clear skies in the near future and see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.